Good morning, students. For today's lesson, I will take you into the world of poetry. W. E. Yeats was an Irish poet, eighteen sixty-five to nineteen thirty-nine. That's his timeline. He started writing poetry when he was seventeen, quite young, and was heavily influenced by poets like B. B. Shelley and Edmund Spenser. Now, the Spivey Shelley and Edmund Spencer, they are one of the greatest poets in the history of English literature. So, they really influenced Yeats into writing poetry. The Wanderings of Ozen and other poems was Yeats' first collection of poems. Published in 1889, it instantly won him the reputation of a significant poet. When you are old is a comic adaptation of a poem of the same name by Yeats. In 1889, when Yeats published his first collection of poems, he also met a 23-year-old English Iris, an Irish revolutionary, Maud Conn, with whom the young poet instantly fell in love. Yeats' love for her is immortalized in many of his poems, including the one you are going to read now. Now, this Maud Gaughan. Maud Gaughan McBride was an English-born Irish Republican revolutionary. Suffragette, sorry, it's suffragette and actress. Now, uh, during Second World War, there was this, you know, feminist movement. Women seeking right to war through organized protest. And one such group was led by Maud Gaughan. And since she was the actress, she was quite influential. She is one of the muse of Yeats. Let's look at the poem. When you're old. When you're old and grey and full of sleep. And nodding by the fire, take down this book. And slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once, and of the shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace, and loved your beauty with love false or true? But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you, and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly, how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. Now take a look at these lines. When you're old and grey and full of sleep, so here Yeats is addressing to Maud Gon, that when she'll be old and grey, you know, when she'll be nodding by the fire, he's asking her to take down the book and read it. And dream of the soft look she had means to remember her youthful times. How many loved your moments of glad grace means there were many people who fell for her beauty. Okay? But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you. There was only this one man who loved you as who you are. Not because of your outwardly appearance, but because as person who you are. So let's understand this poetry in a better way. When you're old is a short, exquisite love lyric of 12 lines. It is a sad and introspective poem and is written in a melancholic tone. So uh, this poem, as uh, I read it, it doesn't sound happy, whether it's quite sad, okay? And it's a love lyric because the lines are being addressed to Maud Gon, okay, the beloved of Yeats. The poem is in the form of a direct address by a lover to his lady love. In the poem, there are three stanzas of four lines, each with a constant rhyme. The rhyme scheme hints that the speaker lover tries to tell her that his love will remain constant even when she grows old. Look at this picture. During those days, people used to dress up like 
Bill Sun, you know, used to dine outside. The most important aspect of this poem is the point of view taken by the narrator. The narrator is asking a woman who is still young to imagine a time when she's past her prime youth, when she's old. The poet tries to put her mind in the future when she is an old and grey woman, full of sleep, to slowly read a book of memories from her youth. As the woman is nodding by the fire, she leaves through the book of her memories and recollects her days of soft looks and sorrows as she changed. So now when she has become old, she is going through her memories, okay? She's turning the pages of the book of her memories and she's recollecting her days when her eyes had soft looks. But with time, you know, her face, you know, with time, we learn a lot of things in life. We face different situations. And when we grow old, you can see the reflection of those experiences of life on the face. She remembers her faded beauty that was admired by many, but then recalls the only man, the narrator, who loved her for her unique soul. He loved her as she grew less beautiful and, has, and as her personality changed with time. So Yeats is saying that, you know, the people who were, you know, admired her for her beauty, okay, those were all superficial. They loved her outwardly appearance, but the poet loved her as who, as who she is. The bird's glad grace expresses that when she is young, beautiful, and in her best moments of life, many will be interested in her. But the love for her will be just false or superficial love. However, the narrator will love her anyway, no matter what happens to her beauty. Blind and love the sorrows of your changing face suggests that when she gets old, her face gets shrunk. So her face looks different, but he will just love her with the same love he always had. Okay? He loved her when she was youthful and he loved her still, even she has become old. There's also a contrast between glad grace and sorrows of your changing face, which suggests that while the others love her in her happy times, she will love her every time, including the worst ones. The phrase pilgrim soul in the line, but one man loved the pilgrim soul in you, refers to the long walk that her soul has had, searching for real happiness, but really being alone. Now in our life, what we search for? A happiness? And in this search, we travel far into our life. And this search and traveling is done by ourselves. So we are alone. So many lovers can love for, love her for how she looks, but only he can love her for who she really is. Pilgrim soul has reference to the biblical belief that every soul is a pilgrim on the way to salvation and redemption. Now you know this, children, that in every religion, it is this thing that our soul travels and it travels to be free, okay, for liberation. Now look at this stanza to your right. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly, how love fled and upaced upon the mountains, overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. Now, in this stanza, the speaker exhorts the loved one to remember him in later years as she sits beside the fire and bends over the embers of the fire. The word murmur suggests a whisper. The murmuring is done by old people. You know, their sound gets quite different. That shows that she has no passion or zest left. This adds to the imagery of old age. A little sadly suggests that in later years of she remembers the speaker she should feel regretful because he's not there anymore. Okay? The poet uses the word love in all the lines in the second stanza and in the third stanza. Second line, he capitalizes the word love, giving it much intensity. And based upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid 
a crowd of stars the pacing suggests that she was given a chance as love waited for her yeats waited for her it also suggests the gradual diminishing of the love which may then wait over about it for a while and then disappear now he is not there anymore the narrator the poet is not there anymore the phrase how love fled refers to the possibility that the speaker's love would just fly far away because she is not interested to his love the mod gone and ease and their unrequited love the theme of when you are old is unrequited love the words are fundamentally a sad and final declaration of love by someone who appears to have lost hope that his devotion will ever be reciprocated the voice is intensely personal it addressed to someone with whom he is closely familiar and that's it's beloved that's all folks that's mod gone sipping a cup of tea i hope you all will read this poem again at home and try to give it your own unique imagination and understanding all right so happy week ahead stay healthy keep learning keep revising bye bye